Hello chaps and chapesses. Today we're going to talk about how to catch Golden Dorado on a fly. So why are Golden Dorado such an exciting fish to catch? Effectively, Golden Dorado are a saltwater fish in freshwater. They're an extremely acrobatic, powerful fish that have unbelievable colours. And unlike a lot of freshwater fish, you can catch very big fish in very small streams. Often you're able to sight fish to those big fish as well and catch them with a variety of techniques, whether it's fishing with a streamer, surface fishing with poppers and gurglers. The actual areas they inhabit are not very widespread. You, you find fish from around the Buenos Aires area for up to further north towards spots like Bolivia. You can see, find them in a range of different environments from uh, northern Argentina in areas like Corrientes and the Esteros de Libera, which is a huge marshland, to the Paraná River and also in Salta, you've got the Hurumento and the Dorado River. And of course, we all know about Simani, that's uh, in Bolivia, but probably has some of the best Dorado fishing in the world. When I was guiding on the marshlands in northern Argentina, I developed, obviously, a real passion for this amazing fish. Some areas that hold particularly big fish, or when you need to use sinking lines because of the nature of the water, a 10 weight might be best. Generally speaking though, for fish 15 to 20 pounds and maybe a little more, people will be using nine weights. If you're fishing in an area where the fish average 10 pounds or less, people will generally use seven or eight weights. Because these are strong and, as I've said, acrobatic fish, just like saltwater fishing, you need a good reel with a strong and smooth drag. There's lots of good models out there, but your standard click and pull reel you might use for salmon fishing or trout, even if it's the right size to match one of those bigger rods, it's just not going to cut it. You've got to have something with a strong, smooth and simple drag. Moving on to lines for Dorado, most of the fishing you'll be doing will be with a floating line. Because of the climate, it is a tropical climate and much of the places that you'll be fishing for them, you do need to have a salt water line or a line that's used to dealing with those higher temperatures. Otherwise what happens is those lines will just become soft and gummy, just not be very easy to fish with. Either Rio Permits, excellent, any of the bonefish lines, even the redfish lines, so long as it's the warm water version, all of those are excellent. Sometimes, especially if water is high and possibly a little coloured, a sinking line can be very useful. This, of course, should match the weight of the rod. If you're using a sinking line, generally speaking, a 300 grain on a nine weight rod is about perfect. Uh, between 250 grains and 350 grains would be more than enough. So something that's of real importance for Dorado are leaders. Uh, and this is often something that people get slightly confused by. I'm pretty simple and I like simple leaders. The leaders, as with the rods, vary according to the type of water you're fishing and the size of fish you're fishing for. If you're fishing for those smaller fish with your seven weight, generally either 25 pound fluorocarbon or 20 pound maxima ultra green is fine. I will either make a furled butt section or make a binami twist and attach this loop to loop to the loop on my fly line. If I'm using a slightly larger rod, a nine weight, most of the time I would be thinking about using 30 pound maximal ultra green or possibly 35 pound fluorocarbon. For sunk line fishing or if I'm using the 10 weight for really big fish, 30 pound maximal ultra green and 40 pound fluorocarbon. What's really important is the wire that goes onto the end of the leader. Dorado have very sharp teeth. If you don't use wire, it's game over. 
they'll cut through it. Even if you've got 40 pound fluorocarbon, they will cut through it quickly and straight away. I like a, quite a long section of knotable wire. Most of the time this will be at least about 10 inches long. The knotable wire should match the leader. So I wouldn't be putting 40 pound wire on 20 pound nylon. The 20 pound knotable wire for your lighter leader setup, for general fishing on your nine weight, 30 pound knotable wire, and for the heavier stuff, 40 pound knotable wire. Either Rio or American fishing wire are great options for that knotable wire. They do a camo, camo version that's n certainly not invisible, but more difficult for the fish to see than darker colors. Tying that wire onto the leader, I use either a back-to-back -back uni knot, or to be honest, what I often do is just an Albright. Works really well. And tying your knotable wire onto the business end, the fly, I use a loop knot. For me, most of the time, a perfection loop is brilliant and works really well. Like all predatory fish, uh, Golden Dorado love streamers and poppers. Let's talk about streamers first. Much of the time, your streamers are matching the colour of the water and the type of bait that would be in the water. One of the main bait fish species that Dorado target a sabalo. These are small bait fish and they look quite similar to a species of coarse fish we might have back home. You find them in large schools of bait within the river systems. As a rule of thumb, the more clear the water, the more natural and muted the streamer pattern will be. So in really clear water, often I'll be using greens, tans, light browns, and I try to make my patterns look quite realistic. In that clearer water, you can also often get by by using slightly smaller flies than you would if the water's high and coloured. When the water's really high and coloured, then I turn towards my oranges, my reds. Orange, red, orange and black are great colour combinations. The one exception to this rule is really black. As with many predatory fish, it can work across different types of water types, whether or not it's crystal clear and a slightly greeny colour, or the water's slightly murky because it's come up and got a tinge of brown colour to it. At times, chartreuse can also work very well. I would tie these flies in a range of sizes between four and eight inches long. This will cover you for most basis. In some conditions, or when you're fishing for particularly big fish, especially with a sinking line, really quite large flies can be especially effective. Bear in mind though, these are also going to be really tough to cast. For most purposes, I would tie these streamer patterns in a 2.0 or 4.0. Tiemco SP600 is an excellent hook, not easy to get hold of. Or actually a Gamakatsu SC15 3.0 or for the bigger patterns 5.0 can also be excellent. Along with streamer patterns a great way of fishing for Dorado is with surface patterns. Having a range of different poppers or gurglers can work really very well. Sometimes especially in Bolivia the guides tie a lot of frog style patterns that imitate various amphibians. These can also work excellently. They're quite difficult to tie so to start with, I would have a basic selection of poppers or gurglers in similar hook sizes to the streamers. Probably slightly larger than four inches, but between six and eight inches long. A lot of those streamer patterns I'm tying uh, have a deer hair head and bead chain eyes. The reason for the deer hair is because it pushes a lot of water and the, this seems to really attract the Dorado. It does make casting the flies a little more difficult so I would have a few patterns without the deer hair head. So where do you find golden dorado? In marsh or in the river? As with a lot of predatory fish, dorado are feature junkies. A lot of the time they'll hold an extra structure, waiting for bait, waiting for stuff like sablo to move past, and then they will ambush the bait, push it up against structure to then catch it. So really look for any undercut banks, sunken logs, the edges of weed beds, even mixes of currents where you've got two currents coming together, that nice riffly water 
is a great area to find dorado. But one thing to really pay attention to, along with fishing to any form of structure, be aware of where the bait is. If you're seeing big schools of sabalo, even if you're not seeing fish, it's always worth a couple of casts. Try not to cast into the school, but target a few casts around the edges. And always, whether or not you're seeing fish, scan the water and look for any disturbance or any kind of action from Dorado. If you're not seeing fish and you're just prospecting structure, it is a real game of all or nothing. The closer your fly gets towards that undercut log or the closer it gets towards that bank, the better. The fish will often hold close to that structure. So when I'm casting, I often land the fly as close as possible. Be prepared to strip straight away because the fish will often hear the slap of your fly as it hits the water. Strip straight away and I'll, I will only have five or six strips, pick it off, put it straight back into the zone. A lot of the time there's no point stripping the fly all the way to the rod tip. You're just, to be honest, wasting time and you're also wasting energy. Especially if you're fishing rivers, most of the time the fly will be presented down and across. If you do cast upstream it's very difficult to strip fast enough to keep pace with the current. Fishing the marshlands, most of the time you're covering likely lies. Just like the rivers, you're casting to structure and you might not get such defined features as you might in rivers. You're casting to weed banks and confluences of current. So stripping for Dorado, general strip would be just a medium paced, quite long strip. But don't be shy of experimenting. If what you're doing isn't working, the same as any other species, try something different. So always be prepared to vary your strip, but obviously your guide will know best and listen to the guide. If you're sight fishing, as you would be in many areas, some of those smaller rivers in northern Argentina, or hopefully in Bolivia, you'll be able to see the fish charge and come for the fly. Your job really is just to read the reaction of a fish. If he's charging the fly but hasn't committed, don't slow down speed up the strip and try and force him to take the fly. If you see a fish is chasing, try and increase the pace of your strip and force him to commit. The phrase that a dog doesn't chase a parked car is very relevant with Dorado fishing, especially if you're sight fishing to them. If fishing with poppers, cast towards that structure, pop twice and then wait. Have a small pause in between each pop Popping like a madman very rarely works. The fish don't really like it. You've got to try and match what you might think an injured fish would do. And rarely are they full of energy and constantly moving. If you do see a fish following the fly, then you can increase the pops more so than you have been. But pop and stop works much better than popping like a madman. Dorado have really hard bony mouths and you've got to treat them like a saltwater fish. Lifting the rod and striking like a trout, it's not going to cut it, it's not going to work. When the fish takes, keep the rod down, keep the rod pointed at the fish and keep strip setting with your stripping hand and keep pulling until you think he's really well set. Once that's happened, inevitably what will happen is the fish will then take to the air and you can normally feel the surge as the fish is about to jump. At this point, just keep the rod low, treat it like a tarpon, let him jump, and then once he's back in the water, just keep an eye bend in the rod and lots of side pressure. Don't be shy to fight them hard. Dorado don't often have really long runs, but they are very acrobatic and they pull very hard. So just lots of pressure and don't be shy. If you're too soft on him, the hook's probably going to come out and it's just going to end in tears. If you're fishing sinking lines, I would aim to cast a little more square across the current, feed some slack, let the line sink, and again, it's a standard strip to start with, so just that medium length, nice smooth strip, and experiment if nothing's happening, as with any other type of fishing, experiment with that strip. Golden Dorado, I mean, not only are they an unbelievable fish to catch on a fly, stunning fish, golden colour, really acrobatic, they just 
seem to live in the most extraordinary environments and very different environments to the ones most of us would normally fish where that's in the heart of a Bolivian jungle the Asteros de Libra which is just one of the world's most amazing marshlands or some of the bigger rivers in Argentina like where Juramento or Paraná they live in some really special places and I know we all want to catch fish but make the most of the place and some of the wildlife you see in these spots is pretty amazing as always I hope you found this video useful please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.